I'll open the other portal, sir. Right. Okay, sir. We can climb in. Come on. Be careful, Tom. Okay, we're over now. Parker! Parker! See him anywhere, sir? No. Parker! Parker, where are you? Pilot's compartment is empty, sir. Uh, so is the rest of the cabin, Tom. The boat is empty. Empty? Then what happened to Captain Parker? We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Hear that? Do you know what that sound is? It's a pioneer of the sky striking out for new worlds to conquer. You're listening to the blazing roar of a jet plane. You fellas and girls, when you grow up, there will be new frontiers to conquer, new challenges, new discoveries in the air age of tomorrow. When the time comes, will you have what it takes to be a jet pilot? Well, the smart thing to do is to start your training now. Learn all the different kinds of jets. And what's more important... Keep yourself in top-notch trim. That's where Kellogg's Pep can help you. Kellogg's Pep is more than just a swell-tasting cereal. Kellogg's Pep supplies you with important food values. Food values you need to keep yourself in top-notch shape. And that's why it's so smart to make sure you eat Kellogg's Pep every single morning. Because Kellogg's Pep gives you more of those builder-upper food values than any other wheat flake cereal. And Pep gives you real flavor, too. A flavor that keeps you coming back for more. Ask Mom to start serving Kellogg's Pep first thing tomorrow. Help yourself to get set for your future by helping yourself to the better-than-ever build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. (laughs) P-E-P. And stay tuned for the big news about the swell prize you get in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Searching through the endless darkness of space for Captain Parker and the missing rocket scout 4J9, Captain Strong and the space cadets have finally found his emergency jet boat drifting aimlessly near the orbit of Jupiter. But when Tom and Captain Strong board the boat, they find it empty. What do you suppose could have happened to him, Captain Strong? Think he he abandoned ship? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think Parker ever blasted off in this boat. What? The food lockers are still full of emergency rations. Well, there's water in the tanks. The oxygen supply is full. Then maybe the boat was launched by accident. No, hardly. The controls are set for automatic flight in what looks to me like a wide orbit around Jupiter. Then Parker simply jettisoned the boat? Yes, but for a reason, of course. He was leaving it as a sort of marker or signpost. Hey, not bad. But then he should have left some kind of a message. Oh, he did. Right here on the control panel, in the logbook. What's he say? Rocket Scout 4J9 hit by meteor, losing reaction mass, communications out, only enough fuel left to reach Jupiter. Jupiter? Oh, no, he didn't. On- only chance will be he crash landing on surface of Jupiter, leaving jet boat and message, praying you will find me, signed Mitch Parker, Captain Rocket Scout 4J9. What a choice he had. To die in space or land on Jupiter, the worst planet in the whole solar system. And this message is dated four days ago, Tom. Four days? He could never survive on Jupiter that long. No, if he even reached it. Well, come on. Let's get back to the Polaris. We've got some heavy blasting to do. Hey, Roger. Roger. Yeah, what do you want, Astro? Any word from the skipper and Tom? They've been on that jet boat for 15 minutes now. I'll say there's word. The skipper just called me. They're on the way back, and he's ordered me to rack up a new heading. Straight for Jupiter. Jupiter? Oh, no. After all the times they've told us to avoid that planet like a plague. Manning! Manning! Have you got that heading? Oh, yes, Captain Strong, but, uh... But what, Manning? Well, you're not serious, are you, sir? We're really going to land on Jupiter? Now, look. Captain Parker had to sit down on Jupiter. I'm sure he would have preferred a nice, warm, civilized place like Earth or or Venus or Mars, but he had no choice. And if by some remote miracle he's been able to survive the storms and cold and the miserable freezing nights, we're going to find him. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sure is, sir. Then man your stations. We blast in one minute. Check in. 
Control that guy. Tom, I'm getting a signal from the surface of Jupiter. What? I can hardly make it out through all the static, but I'm sure it's a radio signal. Manning, this is Captain Strong. Feed it down here, quick. Here it is, sir. Can you make anything out of it, sir? Oh, it's a lot of hash, but it's a radio signal, all right. I think someone down there is trying to get through, sir. But I can't make it out. It's so garbage. Well, we'll cut closer to the surface. Maybe the signal will come in stronger and we can find out where it's coming from. Hello, power deck. Give me full space speed. We're going in. This is the strongest the signal has been. Parker must be on Jupiter somewhere. Tom, tell Astro and Manning to stand by their intercoms. I want to talk to all of them. Aye, sir. Attention crew, stand by. Skipper wants to talk to us. Astro, standing by. What's up, Junior? Stop wasting time, Rod. You'll find out soon enough. My, my. Making noises like a real hot shot again. All right, fellas. Pay attention. Now, this is a decision for all of us to make. There is reason to believe that Captain Parker is alive on Jupiter. The strength of the signal indicates he's somewhere in the area directly below us. Well, what are we waiting for, sir? Let's get him. Now, let me tell you a few things about Jupiter first, Manning. Even though it's a giant planet, it whirls on its axis like a top. Now, this action creates storms that make our hurricanes on Earth seem like spring breezes. Not after listening to Manning, sir. Big winds never bother us anymore. Very funny. Now, pay attention. This is nothing to joke about. The days are only six hours long. And it's plenty cold. But when night falls, it becomes so cold that no living thing can exist on its surface for more than 20 minutes. Nice friendly planet. No, I'm not through yet. Gravity on Jupiter is two and a half times that of Earth. So every step you'll take, you'll feel as if you're dragging a ton of plutonium. And finally, the atmosphere is full of noxious gases, methane and ammonia. Now, what do you say? Only one thing I can think of, sir. When do we land? Do you all feel that way? I always How about you, Manning? You mean help in keeping these jokers out of trouble, sir. Count me in. Thanks, boys. Then stand by for landing. Ready or not, Jupiter, here we come. Well, we're down, sir. Oh, that was a rough one. You mean we made it? We're still in one piece? Yeah, Roger. Spaceman's luck was riding with us. I don't know how you did it, Captain Strong. I've been holding my breath for the last 30 seconds. I told you guys I'd bring you down, okay? Uh Uh-huh. Thanks, Manning. All right, now, let's get to work. Tom, see if you can raise Parker's ship. Aye, sir. Rocket Cruiser Polaris to Rocket Scout 4, J-9. Rocket Cruiser Polaris to Rocket Scout 4, J-9. Come in. Come in, Captain Parker. Nothing at all, sir. Just a lot of electronic interference. I was afraid of that. Corbett and Manning, break out your thermal suits and storm gear. We'll have a look around outside. I'll meet you at the airlock. Aye, aye, sir. And don't forget your respirators. You won't last 30 seconds in that methane and ammonia atmosphere. Captain Strong, what about me? Somebody has to stay aboard the ship, Astro, and you're it. How do you rate all these soft jobs, Astro? Doping off in here while we freeze out there in this overgrown iceberg. Ah, turn off the space gas. If he told you to stay in here, you'd have griped your head off. Ah, blow your jets. The skipper's taking me along because he wants to be sure of finding Captain Parker, that's all. Manning, your hot air should raise the temperature of Jupiter enough to make it a tropical paradise. Go on now, blast off. I'm beat. Can't we rest a while? My legs feel like dead weights. I can hardly drag them. Yeah. I'm I'm in the same orbit, sir. All right. We'll stop for a minute. I'm tired myself. Well, it's no wonder. We each weigh about 450 pounds. 450 pounds? I ought to start reducing. The only thing you ought to reduce is the size of your head. One more crack like that and I'll reduce the number of your teeth. Are you fellas at it again? I guess we're a little tired, sir. Sorry. Well, just rest here while I look around. What does he think he's going to see through that electronic viewer? What we're looking for is a bunch of static. This entire mission's been a wild goose chase from the start. Hold it, Roger. The skipper's waving at us and pointing at something. Give me that viewer. Here. Yeah. I see it. It's a spaceship. Of all the blind luck, we've found it. I don't believe it. Let me look. 
jumping Jupiter. What do you know? I brought the Polaris right to it. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. We have only two hours of daylight left. And that ship is just over a mile away. A mile? I can cover that in no seconds flat. Yeah, on Earth you can, but not on Jupiter. Well, let's go. Now, here we are, boys. We made it. I don't see how. Me either. Now, give me a hand here. I've got to open the airlock. Come on, Raj. Crack away. Some of this ice. Yeah. Well, a little more on this side, boys, and the airlock will be free. I've got it. All right. Now, let's hope it'll open. There it goes. Well, it is high. Quick. And don't fall, or we'll need a Derek to pick you up. Step it up, will you, Junior? Let's get out of this cold. Outer portal cleared, sir. I close it. I'll equalize the pressure. The pressure system sounds like it's in good shape. So the hull isn't sprung. Well, thank goodness for that. Pressure equalized. All right, boys. You can remove your masks now, and let's go. These scouts aren't very big. We won't have far to look. All right, this way. Pilot's compartment is up forward. Look at all those sacks of mail. An awful lot of people aren't going to get letters. No, we'd never be able to transfer all this stuff ourselves. Tom, give me your space light, quick. Oh, here you are, sir. Hey, look! On the floor of the flight compartment. Why, it's Parker. He's not moving. Great Ganymede, is he? Oh, he's still alive, Manning, but he's in a bad way. We've got to get him back to the Polaris. Oh, we can't carry him. Not under this gravity. We've got to, somehow. On the ball, fellas. <laughs> Can't we stop a minute? This is murder. Oh, Manning. Keep moving. Every minute out here lessens Parker's chances. It's getting dark awfully fast, Captain Strong. But that's another reason to move. No one can survive out here at night. I'll get rolling. Hey, what's that? Captain Strong. Look. Up there on top of those mountains. I must be seeing things. The mountains are blowing their tops. It's the hydrogen in the methane atmosphere uniting with the sodium in the mountainside. The ground, it's moving. An earthquake, get down, flat, quick. No, don't. You'll never get up again. Come on, both of you, get in a huddle. We'll lean on each other and brace ourselves. It's our only chance. We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Hold everything. Listen to the big news about the magic moving picture I brought to you by Kellogg's Pep. Fellas and girls, just ask mom to buy Kellogg's Pep, and then you'll get the swellest prize you ever saw, a magic moving picture eye. Here's how the magic eye works. It's a gleaming plastic disc with a picture in the middle. When you hold the magic eye in your hand and tip it back and forth, the picture starts to move, really move. Say, you'll have everybody guessing about your magic power. You'll see speeding train. Movie stars and sport champions like Bob Hope of Paramount Pictures and tennis star Bobby Riggs. And pictures of your TV favorites like Tom Corbett. Sixteen different pictures all together. And best of all, listen to this. To get your magic eye, you don't have to send in. You don't have to mail any box tops. Your magic eye is waiting for you right now at your neighborhood grocers. That's right. There's a magic moving picture eye packed in every box of Kellogg's Pep. Free. At no extra cost. Yes, at the same time that you get a better than ever tasting cereal that helps you to have good bones and strong muscle, you get a swell prize, too. Start your magic moving Moving Picture Eye collection now. That's right. Get your magic eye. Ask Mom to buy Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P. Pep. Captain Parker in the wreckage of his rocket scout on the surface of Jupiter. Tom, Roger, and Captain Strong tried desperately to carry the unconscious man back to their rocket cruiser, the Polaris. But they have to fight the overwhelming gravity force on the planet. Gravity that adds almost 300 pounds to their weight, making each step a tremendous...